Hello YouTube, my name is Plazukas. Today's video is going to be on Skull and Bones. First and foremost, let me establish that live service games done well in 2024 take a long time to develop. On average, they take at least five years. Take a game like Diablo 4, for example, which took five years to develop. In that case, it was successful, but partly because it was Blizzard that was behind it and Blizzard games just sell copies regardless. So when you have games like Suicide Squad or Skull and Bones, you get to a point where because it has taken so long to develop these games and the landscape of video games have changed and there's so many more, there's so much more live service games that exist now, your bets that you made five, six, seven, eight, nine years ago have to really pay off. And for a game like Suicide Squad, it, it hasn't. It hasn't because people are already hating on it just for the fact that it's a live service game, that it took so long to develop, and people just felt like that was a complete waste of time when you could have been doing something else or had different characters or had different abilities and, and different mechanics. For every success, there's an equal amount of failure. And so let me talk about Skull and Bones specifically. Skull and Bones is a game that's going to be released on the 16th. Um, you're going to have early access to get it early, and then we're going to have a beta from the February 8th to the 11th, which, you know, was a surprise to everyone. A very good choice, in my opinion, to, to Ubisoft and to the developers of Skull and Bones so that people can understand what Skull and Bones is. But here's the reality of a lot of these live service games. Here's the reality of video games in general. Video games are very one note. In essence, mechanically, they're very linear. A lot of video games only do one thing and one thing only. Uh, for example, Fortnite is a third person shooter. You know, it's a shooter battle royale. That's all it does. It doesn't do anything else. Yes, it can have all these cosmetics, have all these events and it changes the world and whatever else, but you're still just fighting with guns and those guns in the vehicles and like all the combinations, like you can change it up, but that's all they're doing. Diablo 4, I mean, is a top-down ARPG, but all you're doing is just action spamming abilities, doing these things. It's all you're doing in a world, in like a, you know, in a world. And you can vary it by doing dungeons or by, you know, going on a horse or just by getting new abilities and upgrading. Like you can, you can kind of change things a little bit and it feels a little bit different, but that's all it is right you have suicide squad it's just a looter shooter just like destiny is like all these games are very similar you have uh you know sea of thieves uh it's a ship fair and game but the difference between sea of thieves and this brings me to the point in skull and bones is that with sea of thieves there's a little bit extra outside of just navigating the ship you know navigating a cruiser navigating a a pirate vessel uh you can actually do other things and the rpg elements are a little bit more uh elaborate but that's also had many more years of being live through early access to develop those actual aspects now when we talk about skull and bones skull and bones in my opinion is a very very niche game we're talking about one of the most niche games I've ever played. I can't even say it's the best video game for that specific niche, which is navigating pirate ships or ships in general, the nautical mile. I don't know that I would be willing to say that this game is the best nautical Farron simulator out there, which is what it needs to be in order for it to justify its existence. It it is it is much like the extension of a, uh, of the Assassin's Creed Black Flag game. It, it's very similar to that, but just 15 years potentially too late. And and I think that's the problem that we're that we're currently existing in. Is it a bad game? No, Skull and Bones is not a bad game. But it's so niche and so very narrow in its vision that it, it's going to only appeal to a very small amount of people. And even if it does. It may not even get those people's interest because ultimately you have Sea of Thieves. You have other games, free-to-play model games, mobile games that may just do it even better. Not Maybe not as graphically, maybe not as atmospheric. There are weather systems in the game that are truly fantastic. And for that kind of immersion and that experience, I think Skull and Bones does it top tier. But I just think it's five years too late. And a game like this should not have taken this long to make. And that is part of the issue. You already have to deal with a landscape of live service that requires you to at least do five, six years because you not only need to make the base game, whatever that combat loop is. And let me be very clear, live service games does not need 
a 20 30 hour story does not need you know all these all these features and stuff like that because you're basically going to cut that up and you're going to deliver it throughout the the course of a year two years 10 years however long it lasts but to get to that point to have that cadence to be able to do that with a with a team that you're probably going to have to scale down and that you don't want to overwork or you're going to be working on other games on top of it you need a lot of content yeah. Suicide Squad, the Kill the Justice League, already has a year worth of content waiting to be released. And that's the same with Skull and Bones. Skull and Bones has already pretty much revealed their plans for the future, and they have a year's worth of content. The problem is that year's worth of content are just events, are just fluff to what the actual gameplay loop is. And if you're not interested in nautical combat, if you're not interested in seafaring and in these things that you know you can do in this game and it's graphically impressive and it's atmospherically impressive then this game's not going to appeal to you and that is the problem for a game that has taken as long as it did to develop and for that that's going to change the entire atmosphere of what these games look like in the future they're not going to be as long and if they're not as long they're going to be early access games and if they're early access games then you know they're going to be feature incomplete and then you're just going to have to wait and wait and wait. Um, but then that leads me to the next question. What are we really wanting in a video game nowadays anyway? We had so many video games for la la we had so many video games released last year that were triple A, uh, nines out of tens, fives out of fives, uh, t fours out of fives. They were just Im impressively rich with content and they delivered almost all aspects of what we want from a video game and there's every expectation they're going to meet that demand this year and then we have gta 6 and now death stranding 2 for next year like our content delivery there is no shortage of video games even if they are bad if they're extremely excellent there's no shortage of video games so what do we really want with a video game anyway that's the question we need to ask ourselves do we need a game that requires 100 hours of our time to complete or is it okay that we have a five hour game that um, is reasonably placed or free to play. That's a live service game that is going to expand over the course of the year and you come back every couple months and you play a couple hours, 10, 20 hours of it, and then you're done. Maybe that is a good service. Maybe that is a good uh, cadence for when we're dealing with other games that we want to play, single player games that are 10, 20 hours long, and so on and so forth. So maybe Skull and Bones can fill that specific niche. Maybe it's a perfect game to pick up every every other week or once a month and just play for a couple hours and it's truly fulfilling and satisfying and not to mention it's on ubisoft plus which is their newly uh revamped uh relaunched subscription service that has more than just skull and bones it has assassin's Creed mirage it has avatar it has uh, a couple car racing games. Like it has like the full feature of Ubisoft games and Ubisoft is currently on a cadence to release more in the next couple of years as well. So that service is only gonna get better and better and better. So for that specific purpose, I think I can recommend Skull and Bones to anybody. Make no mistake, Skull and Bones is one of the most niche games to ever exist. And it may not even do it as well as the other games that are similar to it, but that is gonna be based on everybody else's own personal opinions but there's no doubt that it took way too long to develop live service games are currently not viewed as a viable option for most video gamers uh partly because they just don't think they have the time or they just don't want to have an incomplete experience at the start whatever the reason is unfortunately it hurts skull and bones but i do think that if you have not purchased ubisoft plus if you are interested in this game you should play the beta on the 8th to the 11th at least once or twice just to see if this may scratch an itch and and even if you can't do 100 hours in the game initially what's wrong with the ubisoft plus playing Avatar, uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage, and playing this uh, with a month's worth of content sporadically. That's no different than Game Pass, and I think this game deserves at least a chance. And Ubisoft, to their credit, is giving people the option to try it out through a beta, and then you can, you know, buy subscription or pay, the, or pay for the base game. Those are just my opinions for, for Skull and Bones. I wanted to get this out here because this is a truly unique game, almost like Duke Nukem of how long it's been in development, how many issues and delays it's actually had. People didn't think it was actually going to come out, but now it's, it's due to release in a week or two. So what are your thoughts? What are your opinions? But if you like this content, my name is Plazukas. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.